Our lecture today deals with Romanesque art. And Romanesque art is the second of three segments of the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. Now the first thing we'll deal with with this lecture are relics. What they are, where you're going to find them. And relics are basically parts of saints or remains of saints. They might be, for instance, the blood from St. Thomas or hair from the Virgin Mary. They might even be segments of bones, for instance, of St. Lazarus. And pilgrims would travel throughout Europe to visit these relics. And they were going to be housed in churches and they would be put on display during certain days of the week or for certain festivals. Now, relics are thought to have incredible powers. They could heal the sick, and they could also minimize someone's time in purgatory. But what these really are for the communities of these churches or cathedrals were economic engines because pilgrims would flock to these locations. You're looking at a rare relic, or you're looking at a very popular saint, and that would just increase the amount of pilgrims you would have visiting the area, and in turn, making these communities much more prosperous. Now, relics are found within reliquaries, and one of the most famous reliquaries is that of Saint Foy. And I'm not sure if you could consider this to be beautiful or not, but definitely it is stunning to look at. Um, jewels all over the surface. And the relic here are the remains of a young girl who refused to participate in a pagan ritual. So she was put to death. Now, she becomes what's known as a martyr. And a martyr is someone who is killed because of their religious belief. They literally die for their faith. And we see this throughout history. Now, even last week, we saw St. Maurice in one of the artworks, and he was martyred in the third century for not praying to a pagan god. Another stunning reliquary would be that of St. Alexander. And this one comes to us from Belgium. And it is kind of creepy. It looks like a, a life-sized head. And it could easily pass for a Roman ruler, someone like Augustus or Constantine, for instance. The work itself resting on four bronze dragons. And the work itself, you can just imagine the, the expense of this work. Silver, bronze, enamel, pearls, gems, creating this work. Now, one thing that's unique about reliquaries is that they were often stolen by monks. Monks would go to work at an abbey or a church or a cathedral, and after being there enough time, they would gain access to these relics, and then all of a sudden they would steal them, taking them back to their original abbey where they were from. Again, the idea of having relics, not even so much for the relics themselves, but for the economic gain that it would bring that church or that area. Now, churches over this period of time are also going to be going through major renovations. We have a building boom during the Romanesque period that begins around 1000 AD. And a lot of these churches we're going to look at are going to be up in France. That's usually where the best uh, remaining churches are, or at least I should say the best preserved. One of the things that is different about these churches during the Romanesque period is that the material they're made from is going to be stone. And so no longer are we going to have the timber roofs like we saw from the last chapter where we had churches burning down on occasion. Now this is, these are made from stone, which is good as far as the fire hazard goes, but it's bad because of the weight. And so with the arches that we have, um, that will help translocate the weight of the building off to the sides and then to the ground. But because these churches were made so large, many times the walls would collapse and 
when we get to the Gothic era, we're going to see how we have architectural solutions to that. Another change in architecture is the way that the churches are constructed. On this floor plan here, you can see that the churches are no longer round. We saw San Vitale, we saw Santa Costanza, uh, we even saw the uh, Gala Placidia in earlier lectures, and now we have a, a church that is cross-shaped. Now, the main area that you see going north and south, that's called the nave, and then the short area that is perpendicular to that up toward the top, that's going to be the transept. Up above that, that curved area is the apse. That's where the altar is. That's where the relics are going to be as well. And so here we have an image of the nave itself. This is where the congregation is going to sit. And here are some of the major pilgrimage routes that we have throughout Western Europe. And then one last segment on these churches is that we have a lot of sculptural decoration on the outside of the church. And we're going to look at what's called a tympanum. And tympanums are these semicircular arches that are over doorways. You have to figure during the Middle or Dark Ages, a lot of people are illiterate, so they're not going to be able to read the Gospels. They're not going to be able to read illuminated manuscripts, but they are going to understand iconography. And so you have several different stories that can be told outside while people are waiting to get into the church. This one, for instance, is The Last Judgment. And it's a really cool work because we have the artist's name, which is Gisalbertus. And it's one of the very few artist's names we have from this time period. Remember, we've kind of gone backwards from the Greek era and as well as the Roman area where we really kind of knew the artists. But during the Dark Ages, we really don't. Uh, when we look at the bodies of this work, they're very abstract or elongated. We can say that Christ is in heretic scale, just like we saw from the ancient Egyptian art. And we will see in early Renaissance art as well. The figures at the bottom of this work uh, look as if they've been awakened and they're waiting in line to be judged. Uh, there's a few angels below as well, kind of keeping the line moving. And then when we look at Christ, um, the saved are at his right and the damned are at his left. And you can see off to um, his left or our right, uh, kind of the weighing of souls, which is a, a really cool image. We even have uh, a little devil-like figure trying to pull down the weight so that they can take those souls to hell. Um, St. Michael is the one who does the weighing, and I believe I have a close-up of that weighing that we'll look at shortly. The Last Judgment was used a lot during the early medieval era because it was thought that around the year 1000, uh, Christ was going to be coming back. Most of the people at this time, again, were illiterate, and so this not only taught people, but it also would kind of scare them to make sure that you would go to church. In fact, there is a quote uh, just under Christ's feet that says, May this terror terrify those whom earthly error binds, for the horror of these images here in the manner truly depict what will be. And here's the way it looks uh, in person. A few other tympanums from other churches. Christ in a full body halo called a mandorla. Then of course here's the artist's name. 
just under the feet of Christ. One of my favorite images from the pediment below. And the weighing of souls. And we're going to cross over uh, the Church of St. Ambrose, and I want to move on to the Cathedral Complex in Pisa. And this is what churches become, are three segments. We have a baptistry, which you see as the large building in front of you to the left. The cathedral, uh, just off to the right, which is larger than the baptistry. And then... At the very end, a very familiar site, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And that is not just a tower, it's really the bell tower, or we call it the Campanile. And it's tilted to about a 13 degree off plumb. It was built in a very sandy soil. That's why it tilted to begin with, but it has been stabilized. And we see this, all these three buildings make up the cathedral complex. And we're going to see those, particularly if you take Art 5, you'll see it in Florence with the Santa Maria dei Fiori. Um, but you'll see it in a lot of different complexes that we're going to be looking at uh, in the next chapter and such. And here's the uh, Florence Cathedral, the Santa Maria dei Ferrari, Fiori. And um, again, baptistry in front, cathedral behind. And here the bell tower or campanile is off to the right rather than it being lined up. So it doesn't have to be exactly uh, in a row. It can have different uh, configurations as well. But this is where I'm going to stop uh, talking about Roman Escart, and our next video is going to be on the last segment of the Dark Ages, which is the Gothic Age.